Does enlightenment depend on grace or intent or devotion? It depends on all of them. You see, because to become interested in enlightenment or spiritual evolution or salvation, to be interested in Jesus or Buddha or anything, and going to church is already great good karma, is it not? I mean, 80, 87% of the population doesn't even get that far. 87% of the population is not devoted to truth or the pursuit of truth. To merely get on the map itself is incredible. We were going through meditation to the realization that one is the awareness. One is the space out of which the word cat arose. The space is blank. Consciousness is blank. That consciousness has been likened to a light because it's the light of consciousness itself. You realize that that is the manifestation and beyond that is the unmanifest because consciousness itself arose out of an a priori condition. Out of the darkness arose the light, and out of the light, consciousness. Consciousness striking matter evolved as life. That all becomes obvious. <laughs> Is intention and devotion sufficient? I think so, because there's another question here about the great rays. Because um, I think it attunes you to the great rays. Let's ask if there is such a thing. The great rays, as described in the Course of Miracles, is a uh, spiritual fact. We, said. we have permission to ask that. We said. I should have asked permission first. <laughs> About what? Oh, the great race. That's farther in the pack here. We're cheating a little. Uh, there is such a thing, resist. What we're talking about is frequency vibrations over a thousand resist. We're talking about mm, the archangels fifty thousand over resist. Yeah. So what happens? You see, uh, you're, through your act of devotion, you begin to attune yourself to the great powers of heaven. So a human being's nervous system can only handle spiritual energy up to a certain level. Beyond that, it's exquisite, I mean, excruciating pain. Homo spiritus has to evolve, the human nervous system has to evolve to the point it could carry more powerful energy and still remain in a physical body in this planet. The great rays really, in a way, mean that intense spiritual commitment then attracts the attention of, what should we say in the vernacular, great spiritual beings, right, who are out of form, out of physicality, whose dominion is enormous and whose power is enormous, as we say. What brought me out of hell was the thought of an archangel. An archangel heard the thought. That was enough. Oh, so, the entreaty, the commitment, the uh, surrender does then invoke, you might say, the assistance of the great rays, not on a necessary, it's not like a personal basis, but as an automatic consequence of the huge electromagnetic energy field we call God. Huh? 